Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here and you begin to like what you are hearing, please consider hitting the subscribe button and make sure you set the notification bell to all. That way you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video, which happens to be daily. If you are interested in becoming a member of the channel or would like to tip me with a cup of coffee, the information can be found right down below in the description box. Without further ado, it is time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Creepy Encounters. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. After that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes. Me and my friends group around the same age all love one thing, sailing. So in the event of a boat race in a lake in Italy, where we all come from, we decided to participate. Since it was a lake hosting the race, there was a lot of green and campings nearby, and my friend suggested we spend the night that we would have to sleep there in one of the campings. We brought our tents and sleeping mats, and we found the perfect spot, kind of isolated and with a beautiful view of the lake. One small issue, the camping was more like an open space in a little forest. So we were surrounded by trees with the only way to get in and out, a narrow dirt road. We parked the camper there and us teens prepared for the sleep outside while the adults slept in the camper. We had a shit ton of fun, joking, starting a fire, you know, all the things that you do on a camping trip. When it was time to sleep, we all went into our tents and drifted off into our dreams. Well, I hoped so far for my friends, but not for me. I just couldn't sleep. Probably because the uncountable numbers of cokes I downed just the few hours prior. As I stared at the tent's ceiling, I started having this gut feeling that we weren't alone in there. That there was something, or even worse, someone there with us. I didn't think much of it and tried to sleep until I heard a loud sound of a tree branch breaking, and I wasn't the only one to hear it, as my friend, who was in the tent with me, suddenly woke up and whispered, What was that? I simply told him that probably an animal wandering around broke a tree branch on the ground often occurs in forests like that. As I kept explaining, my friend signed for me to shut up and listen. Footsteps. That's what ran through my mind as soon as I heard the leaves and branches moving on the ground. What happened next, though, was scary as hell. We suddenly were woken by the camper's anti-theft alarm going off. We all peeked out of our tents just to see a silhouette of a man running away in the woods and a crowbar near the camper's front right door. Thankfully, the alarm went off and scared the thief because if that didn't happen, most likely all of our belongings that were inside the camper would have been stolen. This happened on the 23rd of July, 2023 in Malvino, Italy. I'm 24 and moved into my first apartment by myself. I usually have roommates, but my last situation was sexually harassed by two guys in my house and also by a 60-year-old woman who was a severe alcoholic and drug addict. Long story. I've been here for two months and it's been good. I love the place, the apartment, and the location. But... Yesterday, I got the shit scared out of me when I received a knock on my door at 3 a.m. I live on the top floor of a 25-floor building and was the first to move in after renovations. 
So, there is only four to five people on my whole floor. I had no texts, no calls from anyone I knew about coming over. First, they knocked. I was silent. They knocked again. It sounded like a man knocking. I called my mom, telling her the situation and that I was truly and utterly terrified, being a young woman. They waited a few minutes and knocked again. My mom called the police for me and two women police officers came up. I told them what happened and they were super kind about the situation. The only person who I could have maybe expected to knock. The only person who had access. The doorman. The doorman in particular has always had a very strained vibe about him. He never talked much, but he was always watching me. I'd go to the elevators and he'd get out of his chair to stare at me, waiting for them to open. He's a 28 to a 32-ish year old. I'm not exactly sure how old he is. And pretty tall, African-American man. He'd always check me out and while he wouldn't say much, he'd flirt. Two days ago, I was going out with some girlfriends and I was dressed in a tight and short black dress with black boots. He seemed really interested in me at that point and definitely spent extra time staring at me. I don't really think much of it. So after talking to the police, they went downstairs and asked him, Hey, so I got a knock on my door at three in the morning. Was that you by chance? And he immediately said, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. I was like, Ugh. Why are you knocking on my door at 3 a.m.? And he answered, Well, it wasn't 3 a.m. It was like 2.30. And then he continued, I was just checking up on you. I asked, Why? And he mumbled something under his breath. I'm like, What did you just say? And he told me, I don't know. I gave him leeway. I said, because you thought I wasn't okay? And he responded, uh-huh, yeah. And I said, why wouldn't you think I was okay? Again, he said, I don't know. I told him that it really scared me. I also said, I see you three to four times a day. Why wouldn't you just talk to me down here? I don't know. Looking back. I also received a knock on my door at 12.30 a.m., but it was very faint, just enough where I thought he was knocking on someone else's door. So weird. After I told him not to knock on my door again, he called me and left a voicemail on my phone. I noticed the random number and realized he called me at midnight and at 3 a.m., I'm super scared because I live alone. Ring doorbells aren't allowed in the building unless requested. And also the management company keeps hiring guys just like this. The last guy was fired. I'd ideally like to actually end my lease. Even if he gets fired, which he definitely will considering the last guy who wasn't nearly as bad got fired. That would be good, but... He now knows where I live, what car I drive, when I come and go, and also has access to the magnets to get up the elevator. He even asked me a few days ago, what's your unit number? So he could come up, like it was premeditated. I'm super scared and hear stories about this all the time. I'm terrified he'll have a maintenance key or something and come into my apartment and hide and wait for me to get home. A young girl was killed by someone who worked in her building. I don't know. What do you think I should do about this? Back when I was about 18 or 19 years old, I was house-sitting with a girl I was studying with. The family we were house-sitting for went to the same church as her, but I didn't really know them well myself. It was more to keep her company in a huge house. 
This was 1997, when the average teenager, like me, didn't have a cell phone. During the week that we were house-sitting, it was a short break in the school calendar, which is why this family was away and why the streets in the area were quieter than usual. My apartment, as well as the house we sat for, was not far from the university. My apartment was actually a three-minute walk from it, and the house a further five-minute by car. So, being a student neighborhood, it was particularly quiet this week. The first weird thing that happened this week when I was at the house was that I dreamed I was driving through a dark forest on a windy, hilly dirt road with no lights anywhere except for those from my car headlights. As I started to go down the hill, the headlights suddenly cut out and everything went dark. The car slowed down to a stop and died. That's when I woke up. In the morning, I went out to my car and it wouldn't start. It had been working perfectly the day before. I had to call a guy to come fix it. It was the starter motor. Well, that was the first creepy thing that happened that week. A day or two later, it was Friday. I planned on driving back home to my parents, who lived in a smaller town about 45 minutes away. I packed up my stuff at the big house and was going to head over to my apartment to collect whatever else I needed for the weekend. That trip between the house and apartment was, as I mentioned, only five minutes or so away. Since it was winter, it was dark by the time I left at around 7 p.m., as I was driving from the house, I noticed in my rearview mirror the headlights of the car behind me, tailing me really close. When I turned, it turned. Back then, I was cautious, but not overly so. Cautious enough to notice in such a short distance that something weird was going on behind me. But then, when I pulled up to the traffic light, it wasn't there anymore. That was the relief short-lived. The car was now beside me. I looked to my right and there was a man inside, alone, smiling at me, slightly maniacally. For a moment, I thought, geez, I should really drive with a beanie on at night so people can't see I'm a petite five foot two female with long blonde hair down to my waist. I also thought, well, he's in the lane to turn right, so I'm good. I pulled off, and the headlights were behind me again. So close I could barely see them over the back of my car. What an ass, I thought. Who drives like that? Thank goodness my turn is coming up on the left soon. After another minute or two of this tailgating, I slowed down strategically didn't indicate and made a sudden sharp left into my driveway, opened the automatic gates and shot inside. The gates closed behind me. Yay, the drama was over. I gathered a few things from the car to take up with me and noticed on my way over to the stairwell that there was a man at the gate that had just closed behind me. He was still on the other side, and I was at the far end of the parking lot, but I could make out it was the dude from the tailgating incident earlier. He was jumping up and down, shaking the gate with absolute rage. Well, I was safely on this side, so I wasn't completely gripped with fear. And besides, there was a group of students making a noise nearby, arriving for a party or something. I headed to the stairs and started going from the basement, ground level, to the first floor. Rounding the stairs on the first floor, I noticed someone running across the parking lot towards the staircase. In hindsight, I still can't fathom why I didn't put two and two together. I guess it's because I subconsciously knew that there was the group being led in through the pedestrian gate. As I was rounding the staircase between the second and third floors, someone suddenly touched me. I spun around. The guy. He had slipped in as part of the small crowd. He said something. I said something sassy back and told him to F off. Then 
I turned my back on him to continue up the stairs. I lived on the third and last floor. He grabbed me from behind, held my back against his chest with his left arm around my neck. I felt something being held against my right side. Ah, crap. A knife. He led me down. I remember thinking that the light was broken on the bottom level. This can't end well. But I was calm. I resisted slightly. He tightened his grip. I felt like I wasn't getting enough oxygen. I started to become a dead weight. He started to drop me. I was groin level. I elbowed. It connected. He dropped me, but spun around to face me, ripped the front of my button down top. Then he stopped. He looked at someone behind me, someone taller than him. His eyes went wide. He turned around and ran. I screamed. Then I too turned around to see who had come to help. There was no one there. But people came out of their apartments after that. The police were called. This was the second time that they were there that night. Uh, what? Turns out, the other weird thing that happened was that my dad had already called the police, and they had come past an hour before. My mom had had a weird feeling all evening, and had hassled my dad endlessly that something bad was going to happen to me. She had been right as it turned out, they caught the guy. I identified him in a lineup. He was a serial, R word, in the area. He was accused of sexually assaulting something like 14 women. One had thrown herself out of the first floor of her apartment to get away from him and broke her leg. Weeks later, the police called me. Before his trial, his cell door had been left open. He was gone. Apparently, it was an inside job. Ah, quick edit. I kept the more graphic details of the actual encounter on the stairs out of my story so as not to distract from the creepy aspects. It was the mid-90s. I was in my early 20s and was on a date with this guy that I had had a crush on for a long time. We went out for dinner, then ended up at a bar until closing time. We stumbled out of the bar pretty drunk and decided to take a walk along the beach, aka awkwardly trying to find a way to move the date along onto more physical things. We found a deserted looking spot and sat down on a log and started making out in a totally obnoxious kind of way. I noticed someone walking behind where we were sitting, but I didn't turn around to look, thinking that it was someone walking their dog or something. This area of beach was close to downtown in a really big park and was usually very active at night though less so on the night since it was a bit chilly and windy. The person who walked behind us circled around onto the sand, walking closer to the water. Again, I wasn't concerned or alarmed. I assumed it was someone else just enjoying the night. Then I could see that they were standing stock still and staring at us. I couldn't totally make out the person's features, but I could see that they looked angry and disapproving. I realized that he probably thought that we were a gay couple. My date was obviously male, but I had super short hair and was wearing a faded jeans and combat boots. Don't judge, it was the 90s. So, probably to the guy, I looked male as well. And what's more, at this time, a lot of gay guys were dressing in kind of a skinhead look. Shaped head, faded jeans, combat boots. The area that we were in, the west end of Vancouver, British Columbia, had lots of gay bars. And the park that we were beside was a well-known cruising spot for gay men. I kind of smirked to myself when I realized what the guy was thinking. I kept making out with my date, enjoying the fact that a homophobic person was cringing a few feet from me. 
That was when I realized that he was holding a big chunk of concrete in his hand. He quickly walked over to us, with the intent, I am guessing, of smashing our heads in. I pulled away from my date and started to hurriedly talk to him, with my face towards the man so that he could easily see that I was a female. I saw the shock on his face when he realized. He quickly put his hand behind his back and walked off. I didn't tell my date what had almost happened. I just told him that I was cold and wanted to go. I was shaken. If I didn't see that guy and hadn't noticed what he was holding, he might have just walked over and smashed one of our heads in with that piece of concrete. There were a lot of gay bashing incidents in that area over the years, but usually it was groups of drunk guys, not a loner like this one. I really feel like he was actively looking for someone to hurt that night. Hello everyone. I recently moved into an apartment with my boyfriend. We instantly fell in love with the place and the price. We got approved and moved in rather quickly. The place is in a college town area. There is a bar nearby, grocery stores and fast food places. Nothing out of the ordinary, nor sketchy. On the day of our move-in, our landlord gave us our keys and briefed us on the neighbors. There are only four apartments in the complex. The landlord said they were very reserved for the most part. One neighbor is very scared of COVID-19, so they stay inside. Neighbor across from us seems to be very reserved as well. Now, I saved the best for last. Our bottom floor neighbor. Let's call him Cal. As we were walking up toward our place, our landlord said, Oh yeah, that's Cal. He is very weird. The boyfriend and I looked at each other like, what the fuck does that mean? His windows and doors were wide open. The landlord explained that he did not have AC at the moment. He continues to have all windows and doors open. We ignored it and continued unpacking. We had prior plans to leave town, so we did not spend the first few nights there. Upon arrival, we discovered why he was weird. When we first saw him, we said hello and made some comment about the weather. He seemed confused or disoriented and said, Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. As the days passed, we would say hi. He would reciprocate at times. It was obvious that he was socially awkward. If I pulled up to our parking lot and he saw me, he would scurry into his room, thought it was unusual, and just brushed it off. We thought that was the extent of his weird. Boy, were we fucking wrong. Slamming, shoving, and hitting of his own doors started at night. Only at night. The slamming and banging was so loud that it woke us up. When we got closer to our door, we heard him yelling. We finally understood why he was deemed weird. This continued for many nights in a row. We would notice that he just stands in the middle of the parking lot and talks to himself. If he sees me, he goes back inside, etc. Things escalated this past weekend. It was late in the evening. We were chilling, watching TV, when we heard a knock. We immediately knew who it was, since Cal was chilling outside with the neighbors. The boyfriend answered the door, and Cal asked, have you seen maybe a young Asian woman walking around? My boyfriend said no, and he walked away. Last night, I came back home from visiting my family. Immediately after I came home, Cal went upstairs. The boyfriend answered the door and asked if we had seen his mom walking around. The boyfriend sternly said no and closed the door. To conclude, this morning at 6 a.m., we heard an extremely loud knock. I awoke immediately. I went to the door and did not see anyone, though I saw a flashlight. 
I got super scared and woke the boyfriend. We looked out and saw there was a police officer looking for Cal. From what we can make out, Cal called the police due to hearing a gunshot and a young woman scream. The boyfriend was up since 5 a.m. and stated he did not hear any of that. At this point, we are on edge with this dude. If he comes upstairs again, we are going to tell him to ask the other neighbors. Update number one. Right as I finished typing this, the previous tenant texted me. He stated that Cal was really weird while they lived there as well. Cal would walk around and talk to himself. The previous tenant said he caught security camera footage of Cal going up the stairs near the door and started working out. Cal noticed the camera and went back downstairs. We will be installing cameras very soon. Update number two. My boyfriend is officially in I wish a motherfucker would mode. Update number three. I forgot to mention, yesterday, before I left to visit my family, I heard someone say, Hello, and shuffled around my front door. I can only imagine who it was. It creeped me out because it was right after my boyfriend left to go golf. Also, boyfriend told me that he heard Cal go up the stairs after the police left at 6 a.m. The boyfriend works early hours from home. And say hello, trying to get someone's attention. I mentioned this in the comments, but my plan is to call the non-emergency police line in the event he continues to be erratic toward myself or us. I really hope it does not get to that point. A quick edit. Yes, I know this man is mentally ill. However, it does not negate the fact that he purposefully tries to talk to us late hours into the night. Compassion is shown, but boundaries will be set. I wish him the best, but our safety, including his, is prudent. Update number four. Police were called because we heard him yell and scream for help. Police came out and said they already knew about him. It seems like he is harmless, but we will still be keeping our distance for our safety and his. This happened about a year ago. I live in a safe Eastern European country where not much crime happens, but I am originally from the Middle East and I can only speak the local language a little bit. Me and my girlfriend, who is local, and another friend of ours from England, who is just a tourist, we decided to go for a picnic during the weekday to the one famous park. This park is a famous destination for picnics, but weekdays, in the mornings, it was mostly empty beside the main area where people do some barbecues and some food carts, or there for ice cream and snacks, etc. After we hang out in the park, we decided to go, and our friend from the UK saw some of the items on the food cart, and she was interested, since it's a new culture to her. And my girlfriend and she started to talk about what are these foods and I was trying to find coins since the clerk is not accepting cards and I mostly pay with card. We spent about 10 minutes like this. The vendor seemed a little too friendly to me. He left the back of the food cart and came to our side to talk to us with his broken English and little translation for my girlfriend. He was talking about football with our friend from the UK and politics of the UK and making racist comments about its president. We bought our products and he was still talking and began to be touchy with the girls and being weird, yelling racist things about the president of the UK and his race. We were kind of moving, but he did not let us end the conversation. He asked our guest where she was staying when she goes back, if she is taking a plane or a bus, and our naive and little drunk friend was answering some of these questions at this point. 
I decided I would take over the conversation and tell the girls to start walking. And I told the guy, thank you, man, for all the conversation and for the items. They look delicious. And I waved at him and so on because he was still talking and walking with us about 20 to 30 meters away from his food cart. At one point, he also said goodbye and finally left. I checked on him after 100 to 200 meters. It was the last moment I can see his cart due to the curve in the walking path and the trees he was serving another person, and I moved on with my life. Now that we left the main area, we have about 3 to 4 kilometers walking until we see someone else. We walked about a kilometer and came across these toilets that you have to put a coin in and the door would unlock. I went inside, both girls were outside, and when I was washing my hands, I heard the girls screaming, he is coming back, oh my god, what does he want? And suddenly, they were like, oh no. I rushed outside to see the same vendor had grabbed both of the girls from their arms and pulled them toward the toilet and telling them something I don't understand. Quick info. This is a guy, maybe 50 to 60 years of age, relatively weak and small. I went outside and rushed the dude to take him down, but he walked away and putting his hands up like to show us that he surrenders or that he is friendly. I stopped as well. I got the girls behind me, told them to walk fast and telling the guy he needs to leave. My girlfriend told me, he was telling them to go inside of the toilet, all of us, so we won't pay multiple times. So, we started walking away, the girls walking in front of me, and the guy is behind us, and he was following us, still trying to look friendly and asking my friend if she was taking a plane. Meanwhile, he is making a plane with his arm gesture and saying, Plane, UK, today, tomorrow? I just wanted to make sure, so we walked another way to confirm he is following us, so I can legitimatize the use of force towards an old guy, if it comes to that. So we changed our route, and he continued to follow us, and at this point, I took a look around and called an Uber to the nearest direction. Meanwhile, we were walking fast with him, following us to the Uber. We approached a couple of buildings under construction, and we were two minutes away from the Uber, which already arrived, and this guy suddenly rushed towards us while swearing with his hands out towards the girls, mumbling some stuff. I grabbed his arm and pushed him away. He almost fell but recovered, and he went back to distance again, but continued to follow us. He said some things no one understood. And my girlfriend answered and told him to go back to his cart. You left it unattended. This guy suddenly unlocks his rage at this point. He is angry, telling us, There are no thieves in this country. There are thieves in the UK and wherever you came from. At this point, my adrenaline hit its peak because I saw this guy was raging and he was continuing to follow us for 30 seconds or longer. And suddenly, he waves his hands and runs towards these buildings under construction. I was in total survival mode. I shouted, run. And we ran to the Uber. I turned back to see the guy for a half a second. He was also running, but not towards us. Towards the construction. Where he waved, but I did not look again. We took the Uber and went home. My girlfriend told me we don't need to go to the police since they won't do anything and it would take our time when we have a guest. None of us managed to take a look at where this guy went to, but at this point we didn't care. We were safe and he was gone. So, it was a nice day out today, and I didn't want to waste money on DoorDash. So, I figured why not walk to a nearby restaurant. It's 20 minutes walking distance from my house, 
and I wanted to get my steps in. I wore shorts and a shirt. It was like 70 degrees. I made a pit stop at the smoking shop, and this was my first encounter with a guy who doesn't freaking understand the word no. He stops me as I'm passing by him, and he asks what my name is. I tell him, then he asks for my number. I tell him, no thank you, I'm not interested. He introduces himself and tells me how old he is, then asks for my number again. I repeat it yet again. No thank you, I'm not interested. He's still persistent. Then he finally asks to put his number in my phone. I figured he can put his number in and I can block him when I get home. I just wanted him to leave me alone. So I let him put his number in and he tells me to have a good day and we go our separate ways. I tell my boyfriend about this encounter. He tells me I should have gave the guy his number instead. I make my way to the restaurant and I'm passing some street. I'm walking briskly trying to get there and back and this guy notices me. I didn't even have to look at him to feel it. I did not have to even turn around to feel his eyes watching me. I did not have to turn around to know he got in his car and started following me as I walked. It's almost like my body was alerting me of this rather than my brain did because I was not comprehending the situation whatsoever. I turn my headphones down and I hear him yelling after me. Yo, yo, repeatedly trying to get my attention. I ignore him and keep walking. This is when he gets in his car and starts following me, still trying to get my attention. He then pulls his car in front of me, kind of blocking my path. I see him in front of me and I get a sick feeling. One I won't ever forget, and this fucking guy waves at me in the creepiest way possible, like a predator catching his prey or something. He tries to get me to come to his car. I shake my head and wave him off. I'm saying, no thank you, I'm not interested. He's mumbling all kinds of shit. You're so beautiful, what's your name? Are you in a relationship? You know. All kinds of bullshit. I'm frozen for a second, looking at him. Then I look down, and I see that his dick is out. He just has it in his hand, just wiggling it around. I see this, and immediately my legs started moving, without my brain having to tell them to. Literally, as if they had a mind of their own. I remember my mind going completely blank, and I didn't register this encounter as danger until I was walking away, reaching in my bag for my pepper spray, and my hands shaking to call my boyfriend. But I did not stop moving. Luckily, the guy sped off and didn't follow me after. I made it to the restaurant, but was too scared to walk back home, so I called an Uber. This has never happened to me before, and I know it doesn't seem like much, but the whole thing was terrifying. I keep thinking back on how my life could have been drastically altered in that moment in so many ways. Luckily, my body reacted way before my brain did and got myself the hell out of there without even thinking about it. Every time I think about it, my heart starts racing. I didn't get his license plate because I was literally just so shocked and I was focused on getting to a safe area away from him. I wished I would have stayed home and ate cereal. I'm scared to even walk anywhere else, even across the street to Kroger like I usually do. This literally ruined everything for me. Just a reminder of how you're never truly safe, no matter where you are. Please be careful and pay attention to your surroundings. And definitely don't give these weirdos the time of day. I just saw a TikTok about how certain butterflies mean certain things. And now that I think about it, I keep seeing a white butterfly in my backyard outside my room window before I left. Then... 
I had another one following me as I was walking from the smoke shop, but I didn't think much of it at the time. But I don't know. They said it means ancestors watching over you, but who knows? Point still stands, though. Pay attention to what and who is around you. This happened several years ago. I had just finished going back and forth down the nature trail, just outside my subdivision a few times, as was custom for my attempts to exercise and lose weight. I turned into the entrance to my subdivision and began walking up the street that inclined upward, where I would eventually turn right and enter the street on which I lived. I had earbuds in and wasn't paying a great deal of attention to my surroundings, but a little ways ahead of me was a big black truck sitting on the left side of the street, and standing on the curb beside it were a couple of little boys, probably around four to six years of age. I was walking up in the street behind it, about to move over to the right side of the street to pass the truck and turn onto my street. Well, once I got close, the truck immediately peeled out of there, tires screeching, bearing hard right and disappearing down my street. I stop and watch the truck vanish from sight, then look over at the kids confusedly, briefly contemplate approaching them and asking what that was just about, but shrug it off and continue on towards home. As I continue home, I think back to the situation and start playing back what I'd seen in my mind, piecing together what I'd just witnessed. There was someone in that truck talking to them, and although I hadn't heard what he said on account of me listening to music and not paying attention, I could hear that it was a man's voice. It also occurred to me that the man had his door wide open while talking to the kids and had not so much as bothered closing it before peeling out. I also noticed that the kids were staring up at him silently, perhaps not with clear fear on their faces, but they didn't look like they liked the situation they were in. And of course, this reiterates what I had briefly considered asking those kids about. Was this guy a complete stranger, trying to coax them into his truck? I dismissed the thought, deciding that it was incredibly unlikely and that there must have been some other explanation. Part of me even wanted it to be true so that I could have a neat story to tell and claim to have stopped a child abduction. But being aware of that desire, I figured I was just letting my imagination run wild, and so I put it out of my mind for a while, maybe a week or two. Eventually, I thought back to that day, and by that point, the denial wore off. I could no longer deny that I had witnessed what was obviously an attempted child abduction. I thought about calling the cops or go around knocking on doors in the area until I found the kids' parents or even asking the kids themselves about it when I'd see them playing on the street later. But I figured the time to act had long passed. The kids weren't abducted and probably told their parents about it already. And that seeing as how I didn't have any real identifying information for the police beyond man in a black truck, they just think I was wasting their time anyway. Looking back on it now, I'm ashamed of my complete inaction here. What I should have done was ask the kids about the guy in that truck, call the cops, if or when they confirmed my suspicions, and taken them to their parents and explained what happened to them myself. And even if it was embarrassing to come around a week or so after the fact and have to explain why I didn't say or do anything at the time, I 100% should have found the parents and told them what I had witnessed. I went and deluded myself into thinking I haven't seen what I had clearly just seen. For all I know, taking action could have stopped this guy and saved some other kids from the same fate.
Hello, I'm currently 18, but this situation happened in 2021. At the time, I was 16. It was afternoon, around 3.30 p.m. I was returning home for my tuition classes. At the time, there was a high spread of COVID-19, so school was happening online. But I had no other options than to go take notes from my teacher, as there was an important exam we had nearby. Normally, I wasn't allowed to go outside because my knowledge of roads and areas were pretty poor. But my teacher's house was about three kilometers away, and on the same route was our old apartment, so they let me. On the way, there was this pushka stall, a popular, affordable, and delicious snack in our country, where I knew the shopkeeper since childhood. While I was walking home from my teacher's place after fetching the notes, I decided to snack on some of those pushkas and have a chat with the kind shopkeeper. The roads were kind of empty at the time, and most of the shops were closed. Only a few passerbys were here and there. As I was eating, I felt someone touch my hair suddenly from behind, which startled me. I was wearing a ponytail. When I turned around, it was an old woman who looked homeless, probably in her 60s or early 70s, smiling at me. She asked me if I could buy her the snacks. At the time, I kind of felt awkward and didn't know how to deny her, so I just said, yes, sure, even though I didn't carry enough money. I just asked the kind shopkeeper to give her my part of the snack that was left. I didn't really mind this, but... When I started to leave, she grabbed my right hand, rightly, and said, God bless you, child. If I could see my granddaughter, she would just be like you, and things like that. I was awkwardly smiling and nodding at the time because I was super uncomfortable. I did try to pull my hand away from her grip politely, but she didn't budge. Then, she started talking about how she raised her daughter and son, and how her drunkard but rich husband used to beat both of them up, and pretty much assault them, and how she kept silent about all of it because of the money. And, later on, when her children grew up, got a job and got married, her husband got into gambling and lost all of his money, went into debt, and died of liver failure. Now, she was homeless. She went to her children, but they resented her because they were greedy, so they didn't help her, as they were happily settled into their own lives. She told me how she lost her everything and shit for the next two weeks. I did sympathize with her, but at the same time, I had to return home because I was too late. The woman had a very eerie body language. She later on asked me about where I lived and, dumb me at the time, told her about it. She asked my dad's name, so I told her, and she said she knew him and started saying things like how he was a nice man. It wasn't a surprise to me as dad is popular around our locality as he's a helpful person who participates in charity work and things like that. So, I don't know what came into me. I asked her for a description of my dad, and she literally described him totally opposite. She just described my physical characteristics, but the thing is, I look like my mother, and me and my dad don't have similar body skin color or height, even though I do have his smile and nose. I said okay and tried to pull my hand away, but... She still wouldn't budge again. Mind you, she was holding it for two hours straight. And while we were talking, she was kind of walking me towards the starting of this dark lane by my road. She now kept on talking about how she wanted to take me to her home and feed me some sweets. That's when it clicked to me. She told me she lost her everything. So how was she going to take me to her home? especially in that dark lane. 
I got so frightened, I told her I needed to get back home or my parents would scold me and actually start using a bit of force to free my wrist from her grips. That's when she literally started dragging me towards the lane and was like, no, you fed me snacks. Now you have to take my return gift. I pulled my hand away from her grip with full force and straight up ran home. I was breaking out in cold sweats as I reached home, and understandably, my parents were angry and confused as I did reach home. They did understand what happened when I explained the whole situation to them. I was really scared at the time, but I truly feel guilty if she was just genuinely a nice old woman. But it was her vibes mainly that were creepy. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true creepy encounters. Before I go on any further, I would like to acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes and the gifted memberships. Patty's niece, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Chrissy Elias, Denise S., Tina Mead, Luz Crispin, Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Dova Khaleesi, Ida Smith, Amy Klenko, Sugared Spite, and Anita B., Thank you all for remaining the pillars that holds back to ashes up. I cannot thank or love you enough. And on to our gifted memberships. The Conspiracy Archives, Grimm's Library, Adam Grigg, Matt Davies, and The Cryptid Sleeps. Thank you all so much for your support of this channel. And to the other subscribers and random listeners, thank you so much for your support. For without you all... I would not have a voice. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please stay safe out there and take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.